Hi everyone. I hope you saw my previous videos on relative motion used on the radar equipment. If not, the links are in the description section below. Please make sure you watch those videos before you watch today's video where we'll discuss another important topic on the use of the marine radar. Today's topic is what is true motion and why do we use it? We will also discuss the advantages and disadvantages of using true motion over relative motion. In order to understand true motion, it will be helpful if you can imagine that you are hovering over the ocean in a helicopter and viewing the ships and land features. The vessels underway are seen to move in their proper direction and speed. The land, docks, bridges are all seen to be stationary. You could get the same effect if you were working with a maneuvering board, chart plot or model table wherein all motions would be seen exactly in the direction and speed at which they were occurring. What you see on your screen right now are two vessels, one eastbound and one northbound. Depending upon their actual or true speeds, they will move across the picture in the direction of their heading and assuming they do not collide, they will eventually pass off the edge of the frame. This type of situation when viewed on the true motion radar would appear as in this figure here. What you see here, the first thing is that the picture appears to be off center. This is correct and normal. And in fact, when using true motion, you will find that the picture is almost never centered. Instead, the picture may appear anywhere on the scope. Another thing you will notice is that your ship's position at the center of the range rings is constantly moving as long as you're underway and takes the head flash, rings and any other features such as the variable range ring or electronic bearing line along with it. If your radar makes a spot of light at the center of the display, then it will leave a tail behind it just as the targets have been doing in relative motion. This is because, of course, your ship's most position is now moving across the radar scope in the direction of the head flash and at a speed proportional to your actual travel. Initially, this discussion will, of course, ignore the effects of wind and current. The tail appearing behind the targets and your vessel then give you an immediate appreciation of the true course and speed of all vessels, including your own. Now, what else do you see on this picture? You will see three targets. Two port is a vessel crossing your bow from west to east and making approximately the same speed as your vessel. Target speed is estimated by comparing the length of the observed tail to the tail left of your ship. On your starboard bow is a vessel on the same course, not on the same course rather, is showing no tail. Right? That contact is not moving. It is stationary or dead in the water. We don't know what it is, but it is not moving. On the starboard beam is a vessel on the same course and speed as yours. Now it is important to understand the difference these last targets have in appearance in the true motion as compared with the relative motion. I will show you an example of how it looks different from one another when the radar is on true motion and relative motion. Now if you think about it, if I state it simply, in each case, their appearances are reversed. If you intend to use true and relative motion displays interchangeably, you must be able to shift your thinking quickly as well and accurately when assessing the nature of types of target. I'll show you what I mean when I compare the true motion picture with the relative motion picture. So why should we use true motion? True motion has two basic advantages over relative motion. Firstly, it is capable of showing the true course and speed of the targets, as we discussed. Secondly, it displays stationary objects as being motionless on the radar screen. And thus, buoys, landmasses, harbor details do not smear on your display as they do in relative motion. If you remember what I showed you before. Now imagine yourself making an approach to a crowded, busy anchorage, identifying buoys, anchored ships and slow moving vessels underway in relative motion becomes an exercise in eye strain because you will see all these targets having tails so you might get confused 
Now the same scene in true motion will be very simply presented. The buoys and anchored vessels all will appear as sharp, non-moving points, while the moving objects not only are obvious, but their tracks indicate their course and speed. Now let's compare, or what I promised you before, to compare the relative motion picture with the true motion picture. In the relative motion display, the point of land and the channel markers move towards your ship's position, which is fixed in the center of the scope. So it will be the other things that will be moving. You will be stationary. As the picture starts to develop, the buoy tracks begin to cover each other and can actually mask the location of nearby objects. The landmass presents a large yellow smear that is distracting to the eye, as you see on your screen right now, to the left. Moving traffic about midway through the channel is difficult to detect. Now what you see on the true motion picture on your right is quite different. You can see that the land masses and buoys are stationary, while the traffic approaching your vessel is quite obvious. So you can see the buoys, they are all stationary, they are all appearing as dots. You can quickly see that all the targets are actually buoys. There is only one moving picture, that's it. So in general, the display is cleaner, easily understandable, and not as confusing as the relative motion picture that you see on the left side. Now, finally, before I end today's discussion, I want to show you that true motion does sound fine, isn't it? However, there are certain disadvantages as well. It's very good at doing what it does best, making sense of situation in which there are lots of stationary objects and showing the true track of moving vessels. However, it does make collision avoidance a bit awkward. It's better to use relative motion when assessing collision or risk of collision. Now to assess the risk of collision, the relative motion of a target must be known. And this is the one thing that the true motion display does not offer. For that, you have to then start plotting. Now look at this picture here. There are four targets appearing on a six mile range. With relative motion, you can easily predict a collision with target D and close quarter situation with target A and C. In true motion, however, only target A will present a collision threat while B, C and D will appear to pass well clear. Target B will show an obvious clear passage in both modes as it is moving parallel to the vessel's head flash and thus its relative motion track is very close to its true motion vector or its reciprocal. If you do not intend to plot for collision risk assessment, you should be very careful when selecting true motion in congested situations. So my recommendation would be that uh, Use relative motion when assessing risk of collision, but otherwise when approaching channels or when navigating in open seas, maybe true motion is a better way of going. However, one cannot say that one is better than the other. It all comes down to what you are comfortable with. Like I said, if you are switching between the two modes, make sure you switch in your thinking as well. Otherwise, you will get confused and you might run in a um, situation which you want to avoid ideally. Thank you for watching today's video guys and I will try to put up more videos on these kind of topics and let me know whether you find these videos useful or not. Bye for now.